started 132 laps ago at the front of the field in the Daytona 500. And he has a teammate up there lined up alongside him. Casey Kane will restart uh, alongside Chase. Jamie McMurray, also driving a Chevy, lines up there in third. Another Chevy of Austin Dillon is fourth. Rusty, we talked earlier about that restart where six Fords are up there. Well, all of a sudden, the pendulum has swung over to the Chevy camp. My my has it changed quick, and it? it's unbelievable how fast this race has changed around. And, you know, I think about uh, Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson has wrecked in every single race. And talk about bad luck. A seven-time champion wraps up the championship last year, comes to Daytona, unfortunately has a wreck in the clash, the 150 duels in the Daytona 500. Man, that is bad luck when something like that happens. You know, all this carnage, I thought this would happen with maybe 10 to go at the end of stage and try the end stage two, not after we go for a restart to take it home to the Daytona 500. Let's hear from Danica Patrick. Yeah, Danica Patrick down here debriefing with Billy Scott, the crew chief on the car, and uh, just kind of talking a little bit about what was going on. She didn't really take the mandatory ride to the care center. Danica, what happened on the back stretch? Uh, I, I didn't see anything that happened while I was out there, but I saw a replay, and it looked like the, the 48 was ahead of the six, and the 48 got sideways, so I don't know if it was... A loose moment, a lift, a hit, um, it's tough to tell. The cars, I feel like the middle lane was not very useful today because the handling was a little bit of a problem. Like, it was hard to stay wide open and get momentum and um, get people to help behind you. So uh, the wind was pretty gusty today. It's some of the more more influential wind I've had out here in a stock car. But, um, you know, the Aspen Dental car was super fast today, and the Fords were super fast today, and we would have we been a contender. Danica Patrick. 27 cars on the lead lap. They're all taking the green flag once again with Chase Elliott, Chase Kane leading the way. And usual on the restart, the inside line is strong early, but by the time they get to turn one, Dave, they're stacked up side by side. They are indeed. Inside line is going to prevail, though, at least for the moment. Chase Elliott gets a good shove from Jamie McMurray, who in turn gets a little boost from behind from Brad Keselowski. Elliott now to the lead, side by side. McMurray is there. And they're stacked up double wide for about nine rows. Race leader Chase Elliott will start at the bottom. He'll go to the top. He'll come back to the bottom. He's trying to block McMurray on the bottom and trying to block Casey Kane's outside. And so far, he's been successful. Maintains the race lead. Move McMurray up to second, side by side for third. Brad Keselowski to the inside of Casey Kane is there, side by side. One thing that is important to note is the fact that we called Kurt Busch, Denny Hamlin, Kevin Harvick, and others involved in that crash. And while they were, they have the damage. They are in this race. They are on the lead lap and still could be factors to win. Meanwhile, at the front of the field, it's Chase Elliott and Jamie McMurray. Side-by-side -side battle for third. That's Brad Keselowski, Keselowski down low. Casey Kane up high. Next row is Elliott Sadler and Austin Dillon. Challenge for the lead now. Chase Elliott under the gun there for just a moment from Jamie McMurray. Elliott blocks that advance. Now he jumps up to block Casey Kane. Uh, Chase Elliott, that is, continues to show the way with a lot of pack of cars behind him. Henrik Motorsports, several ways go. One, two, Casey Kane way up the racetrack off of turn number four and allows Jamie McMurray to hit his side. Here comes the pack up off turn number four up at the front of the field. Chase Elliott, he's blocking first to the inside and pulling up to the outside of the race track. Let's hear from his teammate, Jimmy Johnson. Yeah, Jimmy, watching the replay, it looked like Trevor Blaine maybe got into your quarter panel. What can you tell us about the accident? Yeah, just aggression. Yeah, I just hate that it happened um, that part of the race. I'm, I'm fine with it coming to the checkers, but that just was a called for back there. Uh, it started off in turn two, and it's not just one individual's fault. There's a lot of people involved, and the pushing and shoving going on the back, um, they just spit me out at the end, and, and that was the end of it, and a lot of cars got taken out. There you have it. Jimmy Johnson, very frustrated down here outside the Florida Hospital Care Center. So Jimmy Johnson out of the race. We mentioned Kevin Harvick back in with a shot to come back and rally back and win, but now he's on pit road, Steve. It looks like old faithful. Up turn number four, a couple of cars break loose. Looked like Trevor Bain was one of them in a huge smoke screen out of the first screen away. Caution flag is out once again as cars are still bouncing off the wall at the entrance of pit road right in front of you, Steve Post. Yeah, indeed, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. smacked the wall down here. His car's sitting out in the infield area. Trevor Bain grabs a gear, a lot of damage on the rear end of his automobile. Elliot Sadler now making his way to his pit box as well. So, Rouse Fenway Racing wiped out here all in a few seconds. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. has dropped the window net on the fast and all forward. He's getting ready to climb out. Trevor Bain has continued back out onto the speedway now.